Well, it's time now for our focus report, which takes us to the United States. With nearly 21 million inhabitants, Florida is America's third most populous state. It's also the one most directly threatened by global warming. This is apparent in two of Florida's most iconic sites, the vast wetlands of the Everglades and the Miami seafront. Both urban areas and fragile ecosystems are under threat of rising sea levels and the ongoing destruction of freshwater reserves by seawater infiltration. However, if they are proactively protected in the upcoming decades, scientists say Florida's wetlands could perhaps hold the key to a brighter future, not only for this state, but more widely for our planet. Lucie Lemar and Vincent Rimbaud report with Emerald Maxwell. The Everglades, also known as the River of Grass, spreads over 6,000 square kilometers. This wetland represents the biggest biosphere reserve in Florida. With crocodiles, herons, vegetation, the Everglades are a fragile ecosystem at risk. These scientists from the University of Miami are paying close attention. They've come to study the mangroves in a bit to find a solution to salvage them. These are all the man-made canals here, right? These are all man-made canals, and these canals were made uh, in order to basically drain the, the area so that people can uh, uh, live. So how does it feel to be out in the field? Nice, you know? very nice, you know, for a change. Yeah. <laughs> you study mangroves, we, we, but... Yeah, we study mangroves, but in, in, in the office, you know. <laughs> Over the past 50 years, there's been little progress and urban development is destroying large areas of the mangroves. Meanwhile, another looming threat is global warming. The problem is that in 2060, there are uh, predictions that say that the sea level rise will be at about five millimeters per year, which means that the sea level rise is going to win. It can win against the mangroves. So the mangroves and the soil and the wetlands can't keep up with this rate of sea level rise as it is. Saltwater intrusion can slowly destroy the mangroves, which are home to endangered species, plants and animals. The Everglades could soon disappear, and they're not the only ones at risk. Miami is surrounded by swamps and is vulnerable to major flooding. In Florida, two million residents already live below sea level. Here and the rising floodwaters are creating some trouble for drivers and residents in some parts of South Florida. CBS Scientists say half of Miami Beach could end up underwater before the end of the century. So it's interesting. Here, this area used to get flooded all the time because of very low, uh, low elevation. And this is one of the uh, ways that we found to, to, to at least address this problem. Luis Rodriguez helps engineer solutions to the rising sea levels. Up to 30 anti-flooding pumps have already been installed. Miami is spending $500 million in the battle against rising tides. It's going to bring all the water from the storm drains, like we saw here, and pump it back into the bay. Florida's Republican governor refuses to back the project. He's even banned the use of the term global warming. For Luis Rodriguez, the Republicans are in denial. If you believe in climate change, if you start implementing policies uh, uh, that will begin to fight climate change, you also be fighting against those who support you. They don't see that, <clears throat> that they can't sell out to your special interests. By turning a blind eye, Politicians could be compromising the future of the state of Florida. But for these scientists, solutions exist just outside Miami. They say the Everglades are a valuable resource for combating climate change. They do protect uh, the, the coast from, 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 the, from the physical impact, bombardment of you know, waves. You know, from the global point of view, the carbon sequestration and the carbon storage. Mangroves have, have been storing carbon in the soil, primarily in the soil, for over 5,000 years. They are, they are the guards against, if you will, against climate change. So what we're doing here is we are collecting periphyton. So this is a mix of algae, bacteria, fungi and uh, detritus and uh, these algae are very important because they produce 
about 40% of the oxygen that people uh, breathe. For Luca and many other local scientists, there's still time to fight global warming. With swift action, it could take 30 years to undo the damage to the Everglades mangroves.